In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up your new BrightSign player to use a publishing method called Local Network. This means you will use BrightAuthor Connected to create and publish your content over your local area network directly to your BrightSign player using its IP address. This video contains setup and configuration instructions. Don't worry though, the topics covered here are beginner friendly and suitable for all users. This will be easy. Here's what you need to get started. First, you'll need a BrightSign player. I'll use an XT5 here as an example, but this works the same for all our models. This player will need to be connected to a screen using an HDMI cable. You'll also need to connect an Ethernet cable that can provide an internet connection to the BrightSign. For this video, I will assume that your network allows DHCP connections over Ethernet. The BrightSign will try to connect this way by default. You'll also need power, but for the moment, you can leave that disconnected. I'll get to that in a minute. And finally, you'll need a micro SD card. This card should be blank and formatted using the XFAT file system. Go ahead and insert it into the micro SD card slot of your BrightSign now. And that will take care of the hardware setup for the moment. Now let's take a look at the software you'll need. You'll need to download and install the BrightAuthor connected desktop application, which is available for both Mac and PC. This is totally free and can be found on the BrightSign website. Once you have the software installed, you'll need to create a bsn.cloud account and a network. You must have these steps completed before continuing. Okay, let's get started. First, launch the desktop application BrightAuthor Connected. Use the link in the upper right corner to sign into your bsn.cloud account. Then choose your network. This will be where you provision your BrightSign player. Once you're signed in, you'll see your network's dashboard. In the upper menu, click on the last item called Admin. The Admin panel contains a number of different icons used for player setup and configuration. For this video, you're only focusing on two. The first is Setup, where you'll create the player setup package. And the second is Provision, where you'll register the BrightSign player by its serial number into your bsn.cloud network. Click the icon for Setup first. I'm going to move quickly through these options, showing you what the default recommended settings are, and I'll point out the ones I think you should pay close attention to. I want you to think of this setup as a template that can be created once and applied to one or more BrightSign players. First, give the setup package a name. Try to make it something that will be easy to remember. Here's what I'm naming mine. You won't be naming the player as part of this setup, so enter the word default for now. You'll actually give each player its name in the provision step coming up next. Be sure to choose the time zone for your player. As the default value might be PST, you need the correct time zone for content scheduling. The publishing mode options define how the bright sign will receive its content. This is the main point of the setup package. In this case, you are using BrightAuthor connected to create your content by building presentations. Once you have built a presentation, it will be published along with its schedule to your BrightSign player. This publishing process transfers your content to your BrightSign using your local area network. So go ahead and select the local network option. Network configuration should be set for use current player settings, as this will allow the BrightSign to use DHCP over Ethernet by default. Okay, now look at the right-hand panel for player settings. Player configuration has the local diagnostics web server off by default. This is a security precaution which prevents access to the BrightSign player dashboard using its direct IP address and instead will be accessible through your bsn.cloud network exclusively. Logging options are off by default. As part of your first time setup, I do recommend you include an OS update. It is important to update your player to the latest production release of the OS. To do this, click the rollout for your player model and choose latest released OS. This means that during the setup process, the bright sign will automatically download and apply the OS file. This file could be 400 megabytes in size, so keep that in mind if your internet connection is on the slow side. Remote screenshots are off by default. Debugging options are off by default. Under Advanced, be sure that the Enable BSN.Cloud checkbox is selected. And finally, 
Once you are finished, click the button in the lower left called Add Setup to Library. This saves the setup package into your library. You can have as many of these setup packages as you want. Let's click the Admin menu to go back to the main admin panel. OK, now for the second step. Click the Provision icon. This page is the main provisioning table which allows you to register your BrightSign player to your BSN.Cloud network using its serial number. Add the player by hitting the Add Player button in the upper right corner. Enter the serial number, then enter the name and description you want. I recommend something that makes it easy to identify where the BrightSign player is located or the type of content you plan to run on it. Once you have added the bright sign, you must apply a setup package. Click the checkbox for the player, then hit the Apply Setup button in the upper right. Now, choose the setup package that you created earlier. This is a critical step. Please do not forget to apply setup. Okay, with that complete, here's what you need to understand about this screen. The provision record performs three important steps. First, it binds a specific BrightSign player by serial number to your bsn.cloud network. Second, it gives the BrightSign player its name and description. And finally, it allows you to link the setup configuration to the player. Oh, one more thing. What I showed you here is how to set up a single player. But if you have a lot of players you want to add all at once, you can use the template in the upper left corner. This will let you upload a spreadsheet of all your players. Pretty handy, right? All right, now for the fun part. You can finally power on your bright sign. Because you've created your provision record, the rest of this is automatic. Here is what you should expect to see as the bright sign starts for the first time and sets itself up. I'll let my XT5 run through the process and show you the highlights. The bright sign will reboot several times and display a few different screens during the setup process. This could take a few minutes to complete especially if you are performing an OS update. On first boot, your bright sign will connect to bsn.cloud and look for its provisioning instructions. Your player will download its assigned setup package, extract its contents, and start applying it. An OS update will look like this. And finally, when the process is complete, you should see a congratulations screen confirming the setup type. Here's one last tip for finishing this process. The IP address you see on screen is what you need to use to publish your content to your bright sign. You might want to add this IP address into the software now. Open up your desktop application, Bright Author Connected, and click the Schedule option from the top menu. In the upper left, change the destination type to Local Network. In the box below, you might already see your bright sign player listed. If not, click the plus icon and add the player's IP address. Now you are ready to start building and publishing your presentations.